What opinion about content creation will have you like this? I'll start. The streaming podcast era has made creators lazy. Yes, yes. The streaming podcast era, in my opinion, has made creators lazy. And I'll tell you why. I am not saying that it is inherently easy to do streaming and podcasting. I'm not saying that. Um, There are a lot of talented streamers and podcasters out there that put in the work that, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're, they're legit. Very creative, all of these different things. But to be honest with you, what I'm really referring to is the YouTubers turned streamers. Is the YouTubers turned podcasters. And then I feel like in the last two to three years, it has been such a boom that people don't even go to the YouTube era first and then to the streaming podcast era. They just try to go straight to the streaming podcasting shit. That is... First of all, that's literally a shortcut right there. But second of all, I just feel like the work a lot of us was doing before the streaming and podcast era, when the thing to be was a YouTuber, a lot of the things that we were doing in that era is harder than the things we're doing in the streaming podcast era. I'm going to keep it a whole stack. The amount of prep work that people needed to do for a single YouTube video, the amount of, um, the amount of, whatchamacallit, the amount of editing that people had to do back in the day, especially if you didn't have an editor, you don't have to deal with as much now if you're a streamer or a podcaster. If anything, you probably offload that shit, and even the individual task of making a clip is not as hard as making a whole ass video that you used to do back in the day. You know what I'm saying? The art of making titles and thumbnails. Everything is so quantity over quality now. To be, It still matters, but definitely not as much as it used to in terms of like a per video thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a lazy alternative. The streaming podcasting shit is a lazier alternative. It's a more interactive alternative, right? But a lot of these podcasts nowadays is, and I don't blame them, is literally just sitting down, putting a mic in front of people, letting them yap for two to three hours, and most of the time you don't even got to edit that much. You have to edit camera angles if you even got that, but if if it's a StreamYard-ass podcast, you don't got to do that. A lot of streaming nowadays is gaming. A lot of streaming nowadays is reacting to shit. A lot of streaming nowadays is like small-ass Discord games, you know? Um, and even IRL, the bar is so low right now that honestly going IRL alone separates you from the crowd. Like you don't got to do anything crazy. You just got to go outside because not a lot of people are going outside and touching grass, you know? So that's why I feel like this era is lazier, but I don't blame people. I don't let me let me ask y'all this chat. Let me ask y'all this. If y'all had the option to do less work at your job and arguably make more, would you take it? Cuz I feel like that's essentially what this whole thing is to me. It's like it it, it makes sense. It, it it makes sense. Like I feel like a lot of the YouTubers turn streamers if they pivoted successfully is making more as a streamer or as a podcaster compared to when they were doing, like, YouTube, YouTube. You know what I'm saying? And they're doing less work, like I just said. I do think it's less work overall, especially if you got an organized-ass team that curates topics for you, that does titles and thumbnails and editing for you. Like, especially if you got that, it's definitely less work, you know? Um, But I don't, I don't blame people, bruh. I don't blame people. Making more money while doing less work, that sounds like a no-brainer. That sounds smart. That sounds efficient. That sounds like the right thing to do. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Now, if that affects your career long term, that, that may not be the, the right thing to do. Um, if that affects your pockets for real, because you're trying to go hard at it even though it's not your strengths, maybe you're doing the wrong thing. But if you can pull it off, I don't blame you. I don't I don't fucking blame you, bro. I don't blame you. 
Uh, but let's look at these other takes. Let's let's look at these other takes. Um, let's go to the quotes. Let's go to the quotes. Uh, this is from Double D, Big Double D. As much as big content creators say it isn't luck, it absolutely is a factor. However, if you are legitimately taking the steps to improve or provide something unique, you will eventually give yourself a way better chance. I 100% agree with Double D, man. 100% agree with Double D. Uh, we've had these conversations about how much luck is involved in content creation. And I've come to the conclusion that it definitely is a factor. But it's not an end-all, be-all. And also, um, there is more skill that goes into being the content creator that you need to be. Like, a lot of the things that you need to be uh, to be a successful content creator, you can train up, to be honest with you. Um, and ultimately, you are dealing with a program that's fucking programmed. Like, you're, you're dealing with a website that was programmed by someone mathematically to show you what videos to, to, uh, to show you what videos you want to watch. So, like, there literally is math behind all this shit. But m probability and luck kind of go hand in hand. Um, and if that's the case, I just feel like, um, like, luck, luck is just involved and that's fine. Luck is just involved and that's fine. But I would also like to argue, would y'all, would, let me, let me ask all this chat. Can you be a skilled gambler? Can you be a skilled gambler? I feel like the, the rhetorical answer would be yes, right? Like you can be a, a skilled gambler. It depends. Or is that like an oxymoron? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Not on slots, but in poker. So, that's what I'm saying. I think this is more so aligned with poker than slots. Slots, you literally just fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just pull that lever and hope for the best. But with poker, gambling is gambling, right? Probabilities are probabilities, all of these different things. Like, certain shit is just out of your control. But if you know the probabilities of certain shit happening, even though it's not 100% success rate every single time, but if you play those probabilities to your favor, is it luck at that point? That's essentially what I'm saying. That's essentially what I'm saying. If you play the probabilities to your favor, if you know it's kind of like basketball, where like, if you play the math game with the three-point shot, yes, Every three-point shot, you have a 40% shot of, of, of 40, 35% shot of making, especially if you got the right personnel. But throughout the course of a game, if you keep shooting, like, the math will just math out. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I view content creation, bro. Like, if, if you want to put into a game, it's closer to that than, than anything else. But let's look at these other hot takes. Unless you're in the top, top, top tier of creators you should have a second career ongoing or at least plan a plan in place for your long-term future. Um, I agree. I agree, bro. I feel like even myself, I don't I'm not even in the position to just bank on content creation in full just now. And I feel like personally I have been blessed to be doing this full time. But bro, unless you are that that lacy level of streamer making sixty thousand dollars a month. Unless you are the, I don't even know what the what the floor would be, but if you're making 150 k a year and like 150 to 200 k a year even, I don't even think like that's enough for you to just say, okay, this is going to be a forever thing. I'm, I'm going to keep it a whole stack. I'm going to keep it a whole stack. So if you are in that position, well, you better learn how to pivot. Uh, you better have things set up so that you're not relying so much on this shit. Um, or you can fucking have a second career. I feel like personally, bro, the idea of like having a well-paying job that I love and doing content creation on the side, but still being successful to just add, I don't know, $4,000, $5,000 to my monthly income. But even if it goes down to $3,000, like I'm still not tripping because it's excess money. Bro, I feel like that's fire. I don't I don't know, chat. Like 
I feel like that's fire. Having a side gig that gets you four or five thousand dollars, but you still have this main source of income, so that like, you know what I'm saying? Like if the side gig goes off, like you're you're chilling. I feel like that's fire, bro. That looks like vacation money to me. That looks like money that you can just like use to to pay off fucking loans and pay bills off, like with advancements. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, this is Alvini. Big Alvini. A lot of friends of the show is on here, man. Uh, me personally, everyone wants to be a content creator, but a lot of y'all don't got the work ethic for this shit. Mm, the amount of times it takes to even make a full-time income on this is immense, but obviously very satisfying when you make it. This isn't for everyone. Yeah. A lot of y'all don't got what it takes. I'm sorry. And, and a part of that is just realizing what you're getting into once you get into it. Because a lot of y'all, I, I ain't gonna lie, a, le, a, a lot of y'all really do think this shit is sweet. But once I put a camera in front of your face, once I put a mic in front of your face, once I put an editing software in front of your face and Photoshop in front of your face, you are fucking freezing. You're freezing. Now, mind you, all of these different things from how you record to how to make a thumbnail, to how to edit. All of these things are individual skills that people get paid high levels of money to do. But YouTubers got to do all that shit at once. Like, that, it's not easy. It is not easy at all, bro. Um, Y'all just aren't, at least at a full-time scale. I think that's the caveat in a lot of the things that I'm saying. A lot of the things that I'm saying is, like, what it takes to do full-time. If you just literally just want to do this as a hobby, do whatever the fuck you want. You know what I'm saying? Do do whatever the fuck you want. Um, upload every two weeks. Fuck it. But to do it full-time, that's a, that's a whole different conversation. All right. Let's see. Oh, someone put this in the RDC community. Okay. Mukbangs are literally the most useless form of content ever. I never find it appealing to load up an hour-long video of someone who just sits there and eats, especially the ASMR shit. Chat, how do y'all feel about mukbangs, man? How do y'all feel about mukbangs? No pun intended, W take. I feel like mukbangs is a form of ASMR, bro. I was watching a video today about this, uh, this girl on TikTok, like, blowing the fuck off off of mukbangs. Getting like four or five mil off of her shit. And she's just eating like unedited ass fucking shit. She's just eating food, unediting it, and making bank off of it. I don't know. I don't I don't get the appeal. Unless it's like an interview fashion. Kind of like, would y'all consider hot ones a, a form of mukbang? But like that type of shit. You know, uh, hot ones. Um... What's that? What's that show with the the chicken show with the British lady and we we saw fucking uh Billie Eilish on there like that type of shit. I mean like Keith Lee type shit I enjoy watching. If you're doing I feel like food reviews are a completely different thing than a mukbang though. Like I feel like a mukbang is like someone literally just getting food eating in front of a camera and just that being the content. You know what I'm saying? Or it's it's you eating in front of a camera and yapping about something completely different. I don't get it. I don't get it. Most useless form of content ever. Outside of... Do y'all think mukbangs are more useless than edits? Like doing edits of things? I don't know. I feel like it's definitely harder to do edits than mukbangs, but... Most useless... What do edits do, bro? I don't know. All right, let's see. There'll never be another PewDiePie or Mr. Beast type because there's no major monoculture in society anymore. Cook. There's YouTubers with millions of subs I've never heard of that that have been impossible in the early 2010s. Another PewDiePie or Mr. Beast. Another PewDiePie or Mr. Beast. We're talking about a creator that guns for that number one sub spot. Are we in the parody era, chat? <laughs> Are we in the parody era of content creation, bro? Did y'all look? I, 
I watched a couple of PewDiePie shits, but not too much. I disagree. Kind Speed are on their way to marking a gen. Making a gen, marking a gen. I feel like, I don't know, bro. Is Kai on his way to averaging 100 million views a video? Is Speed on his way to... How many subs has PewDiePie got, bro? PewDiePie got 111 mil, chat. Let me see what Speed got. 27, 28? I think Logan Paul got more than Speed right now. Logan Paul got 23.6. Okay, so Speed got more than Logan. Speed? Speed may be on pace. I ain't gonna lie. Speed. <laughs> the more global Speed becomes, I definitely think like all of these things are helping him. I ain't gonna lie. Speed might be the guy. Speed might be him, man. I don't know. How many is KSI got? KSI got 16.3. Okay, so Logan's bigger than KSI. Speed is bigger than Logan Paul. PewDiePie. Mr. Beast, I think he got like 130 something. 111. 308? Oh my God. I didn't. Chat, I did not know it was 308. Holy shit. I did not know it was 308, bro. I never really looked at the number, bro. Because my thing is, chat, the, the bar PewDiePie set was pretty fucking big. But Mr. Beast took that bar and pushed it the fuck up. Pushed it the fuck up. So if now the bar is 300 million and averaging 100 million views per video... Is Speed on pace to do that? I don't know. Is Speed the, the guy on pace to be the next 100 million sub YouTuber? I think so. But being the next Mr. Beast? Nah. I can't, bro. I can't. I can't, bro. That's different. That's different. That's different, bro. Wavy says, Mr. Beast ruined content creation. This is not his fault, though. People see his success and try to mimic it, killing all authenticity. Uh, disagree. Disagree. I feel like content creation is too... Too uh, niched. There's too many different types of thriving content creators to just say Mr. Beast ruined the shit. Um, let's see. Toasted. Friend of the show, Toasted. Friend of the show, Toasted. 99% of channels are meant to die and most hold on too long or don't pivot in time. Mm. Okay, okay. Is he cooking? Is he cooking? Me personally, I think my friend is cooking, man. I think my friend is cooking. I feel like certain channels are only meant... I'm going to be honest. A majority of channels... Are really only me meant to last four to five years. In terms of like what the idea for the channel is and what's working. It's only meant to last maybe even shorter. I feel like at a certain point in time. You got to figure out that next pivot. You got to figure out that next pivot. Because the internet is so fickle. That two to three years is like alright bro. How long is he going to keep doing this? You know what I'm saying? How long is he going to keep doing the same shit until it gets stale? And I feel like the top content creators are really, really good at adapting their content, which I feel like live streaming definitely helps in that and becoming a personality helps in that. But they are really, really good at adapting and pivoting to the next thing. They, they, they just are. They just are. Um, and they're not afraid to let go of shit when it's just cooked. It's just cooked. Um, this is, this is a harsh reality that, hey man, I ain't gonna lie. I'm looking at it. Let's keep it a buck. <laughs> hey chat, we on what? Year four? We on year four? These are the questions. Souls and Sages on what? Year three? Like, if we're talking about 
the evolution of shit, how much more can we really evolve? I don't know. I don't know. You fumbled not making chain together content when it was pop. We did. We did it with uh, Damo Sage and uh, Trey. Pack up the channel, big bro. Head ass. I don't know. But I even think Souls and Sage, like, the reason why Souls and Sage got extended was because of the Souls and Sage pivot. If, if I didn't pivot from doing NBA content to taking this leap of faith that I personally felt comfortable in because... I had a second job, by the way. Shout out to Playback. Shout out to Agent for giving me that job for for that year. If I didn't have that job, I wouldn't have been comfortable enough to make that Souls and Sage leap. And that Souls and Sage leap has extended that channel for another three years. Three, four years, bro. So, and, and, I, and I'm glad Sage has, bro, I'm so happy for Sage, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Double E's in chat for Sage, man. Double E's in chat for Sage. Double E's in chat for Sage, man. Because I feel like what the pivot that he's made, bro, this is, the, this is that extender that this tweet is talking about. This is that pivot that this tweet is talking about. What Sage found, as long as he keeps on pushing with it, that is something that is legitimately gonna extend his career because of the fact that he just established himself as an anime content creator this year, another three to four years, bro. Another three to four years. Like, that's something he can build upon. And that's something I want to build upon with my streaming shit, is, is for that to be the next pivot. Um, But yeah, man, I, I, I agree with Toasted. I, I, I agree with Toasted over here. Obese fuck shouldn't have a platform. I told y'all, man. The internet and fat people. The internet and fat people. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. This is Big Holla. Friend of the show. People don't want to create good content. They want to be the star of the show. That's what stops most people from creating generational wealth in content creation. Their minds and thoughts are always the focal point of their content. Creating your own content is an entry-level position of media. Mmm. Creating your own content is an entry point of media. Yeah. Yeah. Omar brought it up with Skip Bayless. I'm not too opposed to this take. I'm not too opposed to this take. I feel like you can still be the focal point of your content. You just got to change what that is. You know what I'm saying? You just have to consistently change what that is and you can't be stagnant. But I do feel like at some point you can only do so many pivots. I don't know. You can only do so many pivots. And at some point, man, you got to you gotta find something that's more sustainable where you don't have to be on camera all the time. Because being on camera all the time, like, I, I, I think of content creator lifespans chat similar to, um, like, actors, right? Like, you don't, typically actors don't find a role that they're going to stick with for 20, 30 years, right? Like, even if you get into the business at 17, 18, um, have a 20-year career, you're 38, 39 at the end of that. Like, you know, a, a typical person is still working in their 40s and their 50s. Um, but I feel like content, though, is, is a type of industry where, bro, that 20-year span, bro, you try to make uh, not even 20 because most, most actors don't last that long. But in that 10-year span, you try to make as much money as you can and then you try to leverage that into your to your next phase of life. Like that's just that's just what it is. That's just what it is. Um, but you gotta be prepared for that, dog. Cause nine times out of ten, you are not gonna be the content creator that does this shit for 15, 20 years. It's just not. It's extremely hard to do that. And if that's not you, that's just not you. That's just not you, bro. No one wants to hear your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> your react your reaction content is bad. You should stop streaming so much, period. He's three for three so far. If you don't learn fundamental skills while creating content, editing, and thumbnail making and storytelling, you're wasting your time. I don't know about wasting your time, but it definitely helps. Three for four. 
Content creation is not a career for 95% of people. You're better off spending your time elsewhere. Career is a strong word, so I'm going to have to agree. But I feel like content is one of those things. And I feel like a lot of y'all should do this. Get you a job. Just just go about your life the way you were supposed to go about your life. Do con- Do content on the side as a job. And once the numbers make sense... For you to go full-time in the content, that's when you make the switch. You never just drop all of your things to do content full-time. So, I just disagree with the whole premise of this take anyways. Um, Let's see. Investing in your product is essential. Stop settling for subpar equipment, editing, thumbnails, etc. Um, I agree. I agree. I feel like in any other business, once you... Make revenue that doesn't go straight to personal expenses. You you keep on reinvesting that shit until you can't. Until, you know, you really got to pay bills and shit. But, yeah, as much as you can, reinvest. As much as you can, reinvest. Um, let's see. Lastly, stop focusing on more. Focus on better. Better is better than more. Mm. I feel like every single day, though, chat, I am I am starting to realize. Not that I haven't realized already, man. Quality is just over quantity, man. I, I ain't gonna lie. I don't... Like, every everything is just solved by... At least on, in, in YouTube land, bro. Everything is just solved by making better content. Not more content, just... Like, whatever you're doing right now, just do it better. And the results will reap itself. Like, uh, even even when it comes to streaming, you don't got to stream more. Like, if you're streaming three times a week, you don't got to stream to four. You can do those three streams a week. But make sure when you show up to those three streams, you're bringing the energy. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're coming in with a plan. Like, all of these different things. And then everything else will just kind of unfold itself, dude. Like... Even when it comes to music, you know, the, the guys who are making gimmicky ass music for, for the quick bag, they're, they're, the, they're the one hit wonders. They're the guys that only last a year or two. But the shit that really stays, the shit that really prevails, the shit that makes long lasting careers and diehard fan bases, at the end of the day, it's the quality shit, bro. It's, it, it's, I don't know, bro. Teach the people. I ain't gonna lie, bro. This Q&A got me wanting to make fucking creators create social packet again, man. I ain't. Jeez. 